It's the final weekend of the regular season. We'll have our Big 12 and Rivalry Week picks for you here on a abbreviated edition of Locked On Sooners. You are Locked On Sooners, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma Sooners. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Sooner Nation? Welcome to Locked On Sooners, and thank you for making Locked On Sooners your first listen every single day here as a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is John Williams. You can follow me on Twitter at John9Williams. My buddy here is Josh Helmer. You can follow him on Twitter at JoshOnRef. And with Oklahoma playing in the Black Friday affair, we got a little bit of a different episode for you on Friday. We're just going to pick games. We're going to pick you know, the Big 12 weekend that's coming up and the rivalry week games. This is getting released after the Egg Bowl that occurred on Thursday night, so we're, we're not touching on that one but we got a lot of great games to touch on first let's start with one that's going to have kind of college football or not college football playoff. well maybe college football playoff and big 12 title game implications in the big 12 texas tech at texas now this is the one that everybody's going to have their eye on because brett yormark had a lot of really interesting things to say at a texas tech booster luncheon uh back in the off season but uh man if Texas Tech's defense that's been playing the way it's been playing lately shows up in Austin. They might have a little bit of a shot at this one. How do you see it going, Josh? It's tough for me to talk myself into the idea that Texas is actually going to lose this game to Texas Tech. I'd love for Morton and company to catch lightning in a bottle and somehow go win this game. I think it will be – I don't think Texas wins this thing by – three, four touchdowns. I do expect Tech to give them a challenge. I just don't think, John, they have enough juice to actually pull this thing off ATS. I don't think they're going to get the win here, but I do expect it to be I, – I, I like Tech to cover. I like Tech to keep this thing interesting, and uh, I think the Big 12 commission will be entertained but ultimately disappointed. Yeah. The only way I see this one playing out well for Tech is if somehow, some way. Taj Brooks has a really big game. Teams have not been able to run on Texas very well with a whole lot of success. Baron Morton's going to have to throw the ball, but if you're asking him to drop back 45, 50 times, that's just not going to go well for the Red Raiders. So yeah, I think it's going to be Texas in this one because again, teams have really struggled to run consistently against Texas's really, really impressive interior defensive line. Uh, Also in the big 12, on um, this is now the Saturday matchups. We'll start with Houston at UCF. I don't know if they've got a trophy for this game, but considering how the two sides really battle over which one is space U, they they need one. If it's not like an astronaut helmet or something, they got to have it. I think UCF wins this game because they've just been playing much better football, uh, much more consistent football lately. Lost a bit of a heartbreaker uh, to a Texas Tech a week ago on a blocked extra point. Uh, it was a you know at like five minutes in the game left, but still you you hate to lose by one point, that one point being a blocked extra point. So how do you see it going for, for the Knights versus the Cougars? Well, and for John Rice Plumley and company, you know, trying to again, be that team that picks up a sixth win and, uh, and gets bowl eligible. No, I I like uh, UCF to win the game. I think they're the better team between the two. Obviously they're favored by uh, a couple of touchdowns in this thing going in. And I think it's going to play out about like that, John. Uh, obviously, being at home for UCF, uh, I, I like them offensively to have a, a big final day and to, again, win this game over Houston uh, by uh, a couple of scores. Houston trying to play spoiler one more time. He gave us some signs of life, right, early last week and then and then fizzled out late. So I could see a scenario about like that playing out where they just defensively aren't good enough to hold UCF down. Can R.J. Harvey have another big day that'll be he, he's a really fun player to watch so if, if anything if you're looking for a fun player to watch on saturday go check out hard harvey against the houston defense that's been really up and down uh, the next one we're going to take a look at this one's got big time implications for oklahoma this is the byu cougars at oklahoma state at 2 30 p.m central time on abc i'm gonna put it out there in the atmosphere byu cougars you're coming home with the dub to get the oklahoma sooners into the big 12 title game I love it. I don't think we need to break anything down. That's it. That's what's happening. If uh, Retzloff plays 
similarly to how he did a week ago, if we see that progression continue, then uh, they're going to have a chance, right? You got to be able to run the football effectively. They figured that out a little bit versus uh, Oklahoma. I mean, obviously they ran it better than they, they had been running it. So uh, Robbins man had a monster day, 22 carries for a buck 82. They're going to have to have that versus Oklahoma state. You got to have it where you can run the football, take a little bit of that pressure off of uh Rhett's lot, but Epps, I mean, they've got some guys that can go make plays. I think John, it's just, can you talk yourself into BYU doing anything positively away from, well, BYU. They've yeah. not been good away from home. They've not. I'm just hoping that the Aiden Robbins that we saw last week has a similar day to what RJ Harvey did, what, two weeks ago in UCF's 45 to 3 win over Oklahoma State. So here we go. You're telling me there's a chance. I'm going to believe in that chance. Give me hope. Let's hope, uh, Sooner Nation. The next one West Virginia at Baylor. At 6 p.m. on FS1, man, West Virginia is just going to roll the Baylor Bears, and I think this is Dave Aranda's last game. You're calling curtains after uh, the season finishes three and nine. I I, I am I am I, I you know you don't want to wish for anybody to lose their job. You, I'm not rooting for Dave Aranda to lose his job. It, it, he's a nice guy. You know he's he's a good coach. He's just not inspiring anything productive down there in Waco right now. Yeah, and, and meanwhile, it's a battle of coaches that uh, each one you thought was on borrowed time uh, at different points in time. N Neil Brown has really found a, a response season that uh, he needed for that program. And I think he's going to keep his job regardless. Probably. Oh, yeah, he's he's staying. Yeah, you know, regardless of what happens in this game. All of a sudden, though, yeah, the the shine for Aranda has, has just totally dissipated with the way that they lost four games to in a row to in last season to finish six and seven. And then obviously this year has just been a complete train wreck. I don't see any way that Baylor wins this game. I, I just, how could you pick that? Yeah, it's, it, I just don't have any faith in the bears right now. And I, I think West Virginia, you know, aside from that game against Oklahoma two weeks ago, they've been really, really playing good football on both sides of the ball. So I, I really expect them to, to continue to play really well. Uh, next up, we got Kansas at Cincinnati, 6.30 p.m., ESPN2. It's, it's going to be interesting which who shows up at quarterback, but I think Devin Neal is enough. I mean, this is a team that last week had Kansas State on the ropes. They, they were leading you know, in the fourth quarter against the Wildcats with their third string quarterback. So I just think Lance Leipold has just got something really nice going there. The Kansas Jayhawks have a chance at their first eight win season since 2008. So another big milestone for Lance Leipold and the Jayhawks. Give me Kansas. Sorry, Cincy. Bottom of the barrel for you. Yeah, it's uh it's tough for me to think that Cincinnati's right now good enough, even at home to beat Kansas with its third string quarterback. Think about uh, sentences that you would not have thought you would have said over the past uh, couple of years with where that Cincinnati program was before joining the big 12 and obviously, you know, different quarterbacks and they're, they're trying to upgrade the situation back toward that point. But Kansas where they've come from to where they're at now, even these last two games that they've lost, they, they easily could have beaten both tech and Kansas state. So I do I do agree with you. I think that they find a way to win this final game to feel good about what has been a big time season for Colton Nicky and uh, obviously for Leipold and in, uh, in Lawrence. Last game we're going to talk about is Farmageddon. Iowa State at Kansas State. This one has big 12 title game implications. If Texas Tech beats Texas, Oklahoma fans, you need Iowa State and Rocco Beck and Matt Campbell to go into uh, to Manhattan and beat the Kansas State Wildcats. Josh, how you see it playing out? I I like Kansas State to win. I want to pick Iowa State. I like Iowa State. Kansas State doesn't have a very likely path to the Big 12 championship. It would involve Oklahoma losing to TCU and then uh, some other help. And I just I don't think that's going to happen so i worry about the realization and that settling in a bit for k-state that maybe they're not as geeked up for this farmageddon uh given that they had all these expectations coming into this season and all uh, oh by the way we get here to the finish line and 
probably win this game. You're still not going to the Big 12 championship game. So so the fact that they're not going to be able to defend their crown, more than likely, I, I worry about that for K-State. But ultimately, I, I just think with Will Howard and everybody, I just think they're better than Iowa State and the games getting played in Manhattan. It just depends on which Kansas State team shows up, man. This this can be a really, really good team that can beat just about anybody. And they've shown at times that, man, they, they are not – uh, a consistent team. They can make some mental miscues. They can have some, you know, some blocked field goals, missed field goals that can hamper them a little bit, but I still think it's going to be Kansas state. I do think Rocco Beck has a pretty good day. You know, that Kansas state secondary can be had a little bit through the air. I just think overall the Wildcats talent level is much, not much better, but an, better enough and at home in prime time in front of a crowd that's going to be excited to uh, finish the season strong. So yeah, give me the Wildcats. We're going to pick the rivalry week games uh, coming up after the break. Josh, so many fantastic matchups happening this week across college football. Let's start with Oregon State at Oregon, 7.30 p.m. on Fox in primetime on Friday night. This is, a good big, this is a big one. Oregon has jumped Washington, jumped Florida State in a lot of college football playoff projections. They got to have this one against the Beavers. The Beavers, they're not going to lay down for anybody. They're a tough team. They're kind of like last year's Utah team playing spoiler for everybody. I, I really, man, I think the Beavers are going to keep this thing close but it just feels like Bo Nix has just had something special happening, kind of like Max Duggan did a year ago. You know, if it wasn't for you know a missed field goal against Washington, there's no telling how that game plays out if it goes to overtime. I, I like Oregon in this one, but in a close one. And, and remember, Oregon built that big time lead a year ago and then spit the bit and coughed it all up versus Oregon State. They came all the way back and won that game over uh, Oregon. I, didn't they have like a three touchdown lead? Oh, yeah. or something healthy and they lost. So that's got to be on their minds to not allow that to happen again. And yet th this whole rivalry situation between these two, it's totally up in the air, right? If they're going to play again, I mean, isn't this basically a bedlam situation between these two? Yeah. Washington and Washington state have figured it out, but we haven't heard any news yet on Oregon, Oregon state just yet. Well, and I would imagine, you know, living what our lived experience has been that, there's some legitimate venom from the Oregon state side toward Oregon. They haven't left them in a great situation. And so there's that where you've got a, a chance to really not only play spoiler for a college football playoff appearance uh, for your arch rival, but you got the backdrop of, you know, these guys left you at the altar and uh, you know, didn't care about your future at all. So but I just think Oregon's better. I think Bodacious is too much. It's If it was in Corvallis, I'm taking Oregon State all the way with the venom and the hatred and everything behind it. But the fact that it's not, the fact that it's at Oregon makes me think the Ducks are just too good and it's at home. Yeah, another really fascinating one that has a little bit of, uh, you know, college football playoff, maybe, you know, at least New Year's Six or – sorry, I'm jumping the gun here. One that definitely has some college football playoff uh, implications – Ohio State at Michigan. I mean, this is the one. Whichever team wins this one goes to the Big 12, the Big Ten title game and presumably punches their ticket to the playoff. The other one, you kind of got to hope for some things to happen for you in your favor. Ohio State at Michigan. How you how you see it playing out, Josh? I can't wait. I can't wait to watch this game. Uh, the fact that it's been 11-0 uh, and 0 teams in back-to-back -back seasons is, is pretty amazing. I do think Michigan's the better team. You know, with – all of the circus that is Michigan football here in 2023. I like the way they're able to run the football. I like the multitude of guys they can run the football with. I, I obviously like Ohio State's skill guys better at wide receiver. That's the best collection of skill guys in America. So that's going to be the big key for me is can Michigan tackle? Can they get those guys down in space? And if the answer to that question is yes, and I think more often than not, it will be yes. Then I think J.J. McCarthy with that running game at home makes uh, enough plays, despite uh, what America might want, right? They might really like to see Michigan fall flat on its face. I just think they're still a little bit better than Ohio State. 
Kyle McCord going to play his first game in the big house. That's, I mean, that's a huge environment to walk into, you know, as a first year starter. And I just think that's going to be the difference. You know, he's a good player. And like you said, Ohio state's got great, great skill players, both at running back and at wide receiver, whether it's Travion Henderson or Marvin Harrison jr. Or Mecca, I'm going to mess up his name. So I'm not going to try. Thank you very much. Uh, it's just a really, really talented offense. I just think the difference and, and their defense is really talented as well. They've played really, really well. If Ohio state's defense can force some turnovers in this one to help out comic court a little bit, then they'll have a shot. But I, I just think that the atmosphere is just going to be a little bit too much. And when it comes down to it, it's going to be Michigan. It's going to be JJ McCarthy making the key plays in the critical moments to pull out the win. Moving on to Louisville, Kentucky to see Louisville and Kentucky uh, play Louisville's a top 10 team. You know, they, they've punched their ticket to the ACC title game. And I mean, I think have, has a bit of an outside shot at making some noise in the college football playoff race. If they're able to upset Florida state. So this is a big one for them. They got to, you know, beat the SEC's Kentucky wildcats who've been kind of up and down, but I kind of like Louisville at home in this one. They're going to be geeked out for it. It's going to be a good environment. Uh, give me the Cardinals. Yeah, you want to say that Leary and the Wildcats uh, find a way to pull a stunner here. Would would love that for Mark Stoops. I just with what's on the line for Louisville to try and try and keep college football playoff hopes alive, right? I mean, uh, take a number of zaniness in front of them. I, it feels like that's the team that nobody's giving any chance to go to the college football playoff to, and yet you win this game, win an ACC championship game and enough things happen around you who knows right so uh i'm gonna take louisville at home though i think it's gonna be i think it's gonna be a great rivalry game Mm -hmm. it's gonna be a fantastic one it's another one of those non-conference end of season rivalry games that just has you screaming up to Stillwater. let's make it happen you can still do it it's not outside the realm of possibility uh also the iron bowl alabama at Auburn, Alabama, another team that has a chance to make it to the college football playoff, but they've got to beat Auburn. Again, this is one of those games that gets really weird at times. It doesn't matter if Alabama's you know undefeated, Auburn is average. It's a game that comes down to the wire. I just I still think the Crimson Tide have a lot to play for, and they're still getting better. I feel like each and every single week, and Jalen Monroe in particular. Yeah, Milrose just gotten better and better as the years gone along. I mean, he's a totally different quarterback from who he was playing Texas, which uh, probably was to be expected. I, I would have thought that Alabama would have won that game, even with him going through right. growing pains because it's Alabama, but obviously didn't play out that way, and there's a big-time credit to Texas for that. Auburn has not beaten anybody good. And, uh, you know, A&M, you might tell me, well, that's they're not good either, right? So, uh, But A&M, Georgia, LSU, Ole Miss, all the good teams on the schedule, they haven't been able to beat. Uh, the way that they played at Arkansas, I'll give you that. That, that, part, uh, that, that part was impressive. But, I mean, obviously, the, the New, Mex- New Mexico State thing was just an unmitigated disaster. So I don't like the way that they're trending uh, coming into this thing with that. And uh, Alabama continues to get better and better. I – for drama's sake, you'd love to say the Iron Bowl is going to be uh, wacky and maybe we got a kick six and all sorts of crazy things happening. I, it's tough for me to talk myself into the idea that Auburn's good enough to create that scenario. And I just think Alabama's on a mission to avenge what was an early season loss and uh, on a collision course to meet Georgia with the college football playoff berth on the line in the SEC championship game. Yeah. If anybody was looking past somebody to get to this game, it was certainly Auburn looking past New Mexico state, but Alabama is going to come in really uh, fired up for this one. Arizona at Arizona state, Arizona is the number 15 team in the nation showing that, Hey, they're going to be a team to be reckoned with when they get to the big 12 next year. It it seems like it's going to be the wildcats probably in a runaway, but Arizona state's played some really close games uh, throughout the year as well. So it, it could be one of those fascinating uh, come down to the wire type Pac-12 games that we've seen a lot of this year. I, I think they're going to win uh, by a couple of scores and, and feel great about the way they ended their season. It'd be what a six-game winning streak to close the the regular season for Arizona. And oh, by the way, their losses at Mississippi State by a score versus Washington by a score and uh, versus USC by a couple of points. So it's 
that's been that's been arguably the, the the greatest turnaround this season in in college football. Probably is the best turnaround in college football this season. I don't think it stops here, even on the road in the season finale. Not a good Arizona State team. That team is still trying to work a, a turnaround big time. So I, I like uh, Arizona to win this thing fairly comfortably. Tennessee Vanderbilt. It's Tennessee. <laughs> and it's Vanderbilt. Yeah. I mean, Tennessee's going to win by a lot. Sorry, Vandy. It's just the way it's going to go. Uh, but it is a rivalry game, quote unquote. Washington State at Washington. This is the the couple of teams that, even though they won't be in the same conference, have already figured out how they're going to continue their in-state rivalry for the future. Uh, Washington needs it. I mean, they, they got to have it, man. And and if uh, Michael Penix wants to win the Heisman, if they want to go to the college football playoff game, they got or they got to win. And that's really as simple as it is. I think Washington at home in Seattle, they're going to win this one by a 15 to 20 point margin. I think so too. And yet, because I don't think I pick one upset anywhere else, I'm going to say the apple cup gets weird. They get to, they get to go in uh, to Husky stadium, spring an upset, get bowl eligible. It defies all logic. I don't even really think it's going to happen, but we're going to predict it because why not? We need a little chaos. That's right. Chaos is always fun. And I mean, the big, the big college football playoff, there's a chance for there to be a lot of chaos over the final couple of weeks. We've got a few more picks to get in. We'll talk more about those after the break. All right. Last few picks that we're going to get in for rivalry week, Florida state at Florida. Now this could get really, really interesting after Jordan Travis's gruesome leg injury uh, this past week. I just don't think Florida is very good and Florida state's defense is enough that I think it's going to be more than enough for the Seminoles to stay undefeated going into the ACC title game against Louisville. 17 game win streak on the line. Is that right in this rivalry? Oh, wow. Am, am I reading that correctly? That, that surely that can't be right. Is it? I mean, that, that doesn't seem, uh, doesn't seem possible, but Florida, I think he's going to win this game. I don't think they're very good, but I just worry about the quarterback having been uh, hurt and the mental state of the team coming into this thing. And the fact, uh, obviously that uh, it's in the swamp and you got Florida trying to get uh, bowl eligible. So I, I think the Gators pull an upset in this one, John, in large part, because to me, Florida state's not winning its final two games, winning the ACC and uh, being an undefeated conference champion. So I, I like uh, the Gators to play spoiler here in the season finale only because Jordan Travis isn't playing in the football game. I want to say Florida State maybe has won 17 straight, not against Florida, but just have won 17 straight. That makes sense. Yeah, 17, okay. 17 wins in a row on the line. Okay, well, that's snapping in this yeah. football game. It's that yeah. That streak is done. Yeah, because thanks to Winsipedia, I can see that Florida State had lost three in a row until they won this past uh, in 2022. So, yeah, man, I don't know. I just I just really think that the defense steps up and, and helps carry the load a little bit. All right, number one, Georgia at Georgia Tech. Man, Georgia Tech can be a lot of fun to watch sometimes, but they got no shot in this one. I'm sorry. The Bulldogs, they're, they're going to be contending at some point for uh, – potentially the longest winning streak in, in college football history if they can get through this season undefeated. And they're looking like they're going to have a great shot at that. What would their win streak run to if they win the national championship again? It would be mm. 15, 15, there's 30 and whatever it was uh, the year before that they had won in a row. They, they, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it'd, it'd be a bunch, and they'd all of a sudden be starting to knock on the door of, uh, obviously, Oklahoma's mark. They'd have to go unbeaten to another national championship, and then the, the following season would have a chance at it. But, yeah, it's they're in no danger of uh, losing that this week to Georgia Tech. Yeah, so they, they won the final two games of the 2021 season. Lost the after, SEC championship game. No, they they – lost to Alabama before the SEC. No, that's right. They lost in the SEC championship game, won the two college football playoff games to win the national title. So that's two plus 15, 17 right now at 11. That's 28 games in a row. Um, that's, that's crazy. They could reach 30 games um, before we even get to the college football playoff 
this year and and who knows man but yeah george is going to roll this one uh next up another non-conference late season rivalry game clemson at south carolina man spencer rattler had a big day against the tigers a year ago can they do it again i don't think so i think i think dabble sweeney clemson tigers win this one yeah i i can't talk myself into south carolina springing that upset the the way this year has gone and it does feel like you know, Dabo has has rallied things a little bit for Clemson coming down the stretch. After his fake phone call, things have uh, really started to come together. Oh man, Dabo Sweeney. So I saw a bit a uh, a bowl projection from USA Today Sports um, that had Clemson and Oklahoma State playing in I think the Pop Tarts Bowl, and I think that would be a fantastic matchup just for the coaches alone. Uh, especially with the transfer portal having been really hot and heavy and just all their thoughts on transfer portal and NIL. Like, I think you need a panel, just the two of them just up there talking together for about an hour. And it could be a lot of fun for everybody involved. Uh, we got a, uh, one more game in rivalry week of the 2022 or 2023, 2022, 2023 college football season. I'm going back in time. Um, North Carolina at NC state, North Carolina unranked, uh, facing the number 22 wolf pack in where do they play? I can't believe I'm blanking on where NC state Raleigh is. Raleigh. That's in the, the research triangle. I know that much. My uncle, my uncle, a wolf pack alum, uh, got his, uh, undergrad and graduate degree and then went off to the air force. So anyway, shout out uncle Jim, AKA Gus. That's his call sign, AKA Boneface. That's my call sign for him Um, because he was Skeletor. He was always Skeletor when we played He-Man back in the day. Anyway, North Carolina at North Carolina State. Drake May's last hurrah, potentially? Well, I think it is, yeah. I mean, nobody expects Drake May to to come back. So, Uh, But I don't think he's getting a win here. I I don't, man. I think uh, North Carolina State is uh, picking up this season-ending dub uh, over the Tar Heels who – watch the the end of this year final six games or so be pretty disappointing all things considered lost to virginia uh georgia tech i mean who knows what the heck happened there and then obviously clemson last week and i think nc state this week since the wolf pack lost to duke 24 to 3 back on october 14th here are their last four wins beat clemson 24 to 17 beat Miami 20 to six wake Forest 26 to six. And then in a bit of a surprise, you know, they did beat Virginia tech, but it was a 35 28 game. I mean, Virginia tech, they found their, their Texas tech offense all of a sudden in that one, but not really. They just don't score a lot of points. My grandpa's alma mater, by the way, the Virginia tech Hokies. Um, yeah, they're just rolling right now. NC state is rolling NC. Not so much. It's at home for the wolf pack an opportunity to kind of make a statement going out the door. Give me the wolf pack. Shout out uncle Jim. We'll get you, get you a win here. Uh, final week of the season, but that's going to do it for today's episode of locked on Sooners. Hope you enjoy Oklahoma versus TCU. We got you ready all week for that. We had our crossover edition of the show on Wednesday. Josh and I broke the game down a little bit more for you on Thanksgiving day on Thursday. So go check out those episodes. If you haven't to get you ready for Oklahoma TCU, But we wanted to provide this for you to get you ready for a big, big college football weekend. Follow Josh on Twitter at Josh on ref myself at John nine Williams. The show is at locked on Sooners subscribe to the show, wherever you get your podcasts, we're free and available on all podcast platforms and on YouTube. So go check it out, hit that notification bell and that subscribe button to let you know when new episodes drop. We can't wait to talk to you more about how this game plays out on Friday on black Friday for the Oklahoma Sooners but we'll have more content and coverage for you all off season long or to get you ready for an Oklahoma Sooners Big 12 title game. Make sure you're tuned in and subscribed. But until next time, he's Josh. I'm John Boomer Sooner.